Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about Naqshar number 10 and we are going to talk about uh, seepage. Uh, to talk about seepage, seepage is considered one of the most co uh, common uh, uh, problems that in geotechnical engineering and uh, in order to understand the, the seepage analysis we need to understand that uh, what is seepage? Seepage is the ability of the soil to pass the soil uh, to pass the water through its soil particles. We know that if we have uh, a soil and the soil is co consist of uh, some particles, these particles between them there are some voids. Between uh, uh, these voids will be filled with either air or water. But that's not the point. Sometimes there are uh, passes between these voids and each other, and we call this porosity. So, uh, depending on the porosity of the soil uh, and its connectiv uh, connectivity of the voids with each other, it defines the ability of the soil to pass water. So, imagine we have uh, a, a, a layer of uh, sand soil so this sand soil uh, its particle is uh, relatively large so and it contain between each other uh, a large void when this void is connected together and there is a difference in the pressure between point and another point let's imagine that we have uh, the height of the water at one level is larger than another level so the water uh, start to move from the higher level to the lower level we all know this point so in soil it is the same thing if the water level or the water pressure at one point is larger than another point the water will start to move and what helps the water to move through the soil is the ability of the soil to pass the water which is through the connectivity of the voids between the soil particles so this is what we can define it as seepage in order to understand the seepage or calculate the seepage there is a factor called permeability permeability factor is a factor that we use to uh, judge the ability of the soil to pass the water in order to understand and to measure the permeability of the soil we need to do some field and some lab experiment uh, and to get this factor so we can use it in the seepage analysis right now in this lecture we will go first through calculating the permeability factor then we will go through how to calculate how to calculate the seepage then we will start to analyze this using gts and x in, or, uh, in order to uh, study uh, the flow movement and the quantity of the water will escape especially in structures like dams where we can see the seepage phenomena is very effective is when we look at structures like dams and the dam main uh, job is to block the water at the upstream so if this dam is uh, moving water from the upstream to the downstream that means that da this dam is not efficient uh, in order to design the dam the main the main analysis you need to do uh, to uh, say that this dam if this is especially if this is earth dam because this is uh, what we are talking about uh, today so the main thing or the main analysis we need to do is seepage analysis another application for the seepage when we are doing excavation for building or for what uh, infrastructure work we need to install sheet pile and this between uh, and we know that the sheet pile uh, main job is to uh, retain the soil and prevent it from uh, heaving or f filling inside our uh, site so we can uh, initiate and implement our work but sometimes when the water level is very high and the water is expected to escape or to fall and to fill the uh, the site we need to block this so one of the ways to block the to block the water is through bentonite uh, piles which has very low permeability as we know that the clay clay 
is a uh, particle is very small and the void between the particle will be extremely small so the ability of the clay soil to pass the water it will be very low so that's why the coefficient of permeability will be very low so uh, in application like this we have to design our problem uh, as we saw before we did a, uh, analysis for stresses so we can get uh, the stability of the soil around this excavation and we already calculated the uh, straining action inside our problem but uh, uh, after this we started to talk about slope stability and we saw that we can do some slope stability analysis to calculate the overall stability then today we are going to add another thing to our coupled analysis which, uh, which is the seabed analysis but before we initiating how to model uh, seabed analysis we need to understand uh, the parameter k or the parameter coefficient of permeability then we understand the seepage then we can go to the analysis so we will go now to understand what is permeability so permeability as we can uh, as as i said it's a coefficient which uh, judge the, the the ability of the soil to pass uh, water between its void and we agreed that the water in general start to move from the highest pressure to the lowest pressure which means that the soil uh, which means that the soil as uh, a water will uh, uh, controlled by an equation which is bernoulli equation Bernoulli equation is considered one of the famous equation in science in general because this is the equation which control uh, any flow and as we can see here this equation this equation is consists of three main parameters the pressure head the velocity head and the elevation so h is the total head and u is the pressure Gamma is the uh, unit weight of the water. V square is the velocity square of the flow. G is the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 uh, meter per second square. And Z, uh, and Z is the elevation head. If we went here to this graph, we can start to understand this more. If this is our datum of calculation, so this is Z, as we can see here. At this point, if we are calculating from, so we can calculate the head at this point and the head at this point. And the difference between the head at this point and this point uh, is considered uh, the head that causes the water to flow. So at this point, the head in this equation will be uh, Z will be Z A, and we can see this is Z A, and the uh, pressure at this uh, at this if the water is under pressure, uh, if we added bosometer at this point, we will find that the water will rise in this. Uh, in this tube a piezometer up to this level so the part of the uh, uh, the part of this equation will be ua uh, over gamma water and the same as if this water is moving under velocity we will add the part of the velocity so at the at point P it is the same thing this is the distance between point A and point P so the water to the water start to move from point A to point B it is the head H A minus the head H B so the head at H A is Z A plus U A over uh, gamma water and B which is Z B or uh, plus U B over gamma water 
but since the velocity of uh, the cvg here uh, is very slow so we can ignore the velocity here because the, if the, the pressure is not very high in the soil besides there is a lot of friction so the seepage in the soil will be very small not like it's in the tube if we are taking this like a tube so we have to include the velocity of the fluid in the tube but since we are dealing with soil so the velocity will be very small so this part will be so the the velocity will uh, will goes to zero so the pressure or the total head will be uh, the summation of the pressure head plus the elevation head as we can see in this equation so the difference between the two points to be able to see the uh, the head that causes the water to move is the difference between h a minus h b so this this delta h which is h a minus h b it take us to another very important definition in fluid mechanics or when we calculate or talk about sewage and permeability which is a parameter called hydraulic gradient so hydraulic gradient is the delta h the difference in uh, the head uh, over the distance so it's gonna be delta h by L. So we uh, we uh, define this as delta H by L. So Darcy and we call this as Darcy law. So here is the natural variation between the velocity and the hydraulic gradient. Here at zone uh, one, as we know from our uh, study in uh, undergraduates uh, in undergrad, we knew that the flow when it moves, it moves in three different ways. There are laminar flow when the flow is very steady and uh, the velocity and the, uh, the hydraulic gradient will be linear. Then it will be turbulent, like the flow will be very high and the relation will be. Um, uh, will be uh, non-linear like this and there are the transition zones between both of them and in most soil the flow through the void space it's uh, the, the relation is uh, uh, proportional so the velocity will uh, will uh, be related to the hydraulic gradient if the hydraulic gradient is high that means the velocity is high and v uh, versa versa like in the other is way so Darcy law is a very important law in uh, in seepage and and uh, the velocity of the of the uh, the fluid equal k by uh, product i. So we know that there is a relation between the velocity of the fluid and the hydraulic gradient and the constant that define the this velocity is called k so what is k k here is the permeability or the coefficient of the permeability or the ability of the domain or the medium to pass the water so v is the charge velocity and which is the quantity of water flowing in uh, unit time through the unit cross section area of the and the direction of the flow k is the hydraulic conductivity or coefficient of permeability in another way you can find it they call it hydraulic uh, conductivity or coefficient of permeability so here if we imagine that this is our uh, soil and if we take a section of uh, section here with length n so the area of the soil uh, it's like this so and this uh, tube is filled with soil but as we can see the soil particles here is uh, scattered and they are away from each other so this is the area of the soil like our the spacement cross section equal a but if we take this part of solid and we compressed it uh, to be just solid so we will find that our domain will be part of solid and part of voids so the water will go through this void and this is the idealized way to describe this so if we said that uh, since we know one of the most important uh, law is the continuity equation because the uh, flow 
which comes here equals the flow which comes out so q q is the quantity of the flow it will be constant that means that the velocity of the flow before it goes to the soil uh, by the cross section is equal than the velocity of the flow inside the soil particles multiplied by the cross section area of the uh, voids in the pipe and it's understand from this is constant that the velocity of the flow inside the soil will be larger because the area will be less so if vs is the seepage velocity area is the area of the void of the cross section area so uh, so here we understand that the area is equal area voids plus area uh, solids and through the continuity equation we end up with uh, with this uh, equation which is uh, the uh, the velocity of the uh, uh, the velocity the discharge velocity here uh, so we can say that the velocity of the seepage in the soil is controlled by as and is controlled by the vo uh, the volume of the void plus volume of solids over the volume of the void uh, uh, product the speed of uh, the flow or the discharge uh, speed so eventually it depend on uh, 1 plus e over e which is equal uh, at the end equal the porosity and as I said that the speed of the flow inside the, the soil will depend on the soil porosity here so we can see that the speed of the soil or the seepage is equal v over n and we know that n from the lecture when we were talk about uh, the modified Mohr coulomb and we said that the porosity is always less than one because the porosity is the voids of uh, the, the uh, like the volume of the voids over the total volume so it's always equal it's always less than one so it's always the speed of the uh, uh, the soil uh, of the uh, water inside the or the seepage speed is larger than the discharge speed so the discharge velocity and the hydraulic gradient here as we can see this relation is uh, uh, is uh, related through the coefficient of uh, or of the permeability co coefficient now we need to know how we uh, how we calculate uh, the hydraulic conductivity or coefficient of conductivity so we already understand now what is this uh, what is the uh, uh, Bernoulli equation and how we can apply the pressure head uh, equation to this and we we'll understand the meaning of the hydraulic gradient and we we'll understand there is a seepage velocity and discharge velocity and they are com uh, connected together through the porosity and the seepage is always Always faster than the charge velocity uh, with the ratio related to the porosity because the cross section area of the soil uh, of the void in the soil is less than uh, the domain and uh, uh, and that's uh, and uh, since the quantity of water will be the same that gives us that the velocity of the seepage will be always larger so how we can how we can measure the hydraulic conductivity or the uh, coefficient of permeability there are typical values for the hydraulic conductivity k for if this is a green uh, a clean gravel we can see that uh, we can see that the hydraulic conductivity as uh, units is centimeter per per second it's a speed uh, unit because if we came here we find that if we came here we find that uh, i which is the hydraulic gradient is unitless unit and v is, which is a velocity is a unit of velocity so always the hydraulic uh, conductivity is a speed unit it has a speed unit uh, clean so the clean gravel uh, conductivity k is from 100 to 1 centimeter per uh, second and uh, if since the particles start to be smaller that means this uh, number will be smaller until we reach to the clay which is very very small values so we can see that 
this is not uh, important information to understand right now it doesn't matter you just need to know what is the uh, hydraulic uh, connectivity so in order to determine the hydraulic connectivity there are as I said uh, uh, two ways there are lab and field test in order to talk about the lab test there are uh, different tests one for the sand soil and one for the clay soil the one for the sand soil it's called a uh, constant head test and for clay soil it's called falling head test the overview of the test here it's always related to the Q which is a quantity of water is equal uh, the quantity is always equal the velocity by area as a cross section since the cross area is a cross section and the velocity uh, and the uh, velocity uh, as we can see it's equal k by i so uh, we can say that q is equal a k i and by time uh, so here this is a test so this is our uh, tube here and this is our soil there is a porous plate up here so there is a porous plate down here to prevent the escape of the soil this is our container and this is our uh, tube here and this is our graduate flask so all we do is we are trying to uh, and this is the head of the water here from this point to this point and this is L so to understand the hydraulic gradient will be H over L because this is the difference in the head between this point and this point through this soil so uh, and uh, uh, the length of the, the spacement here is L so the hydraulic gradient which is the difference in the head uh, over the path of the water length so it's gonna be L so in this we are trying to measure a quantity of water in time that will be the uh, like uh, the first part which is the quantity flow uh, here so we already can calculate a volume of water here in a specific time let's say in like we are going to cal to gather a quantity of water in uh, 10 seconds and uh, then uh, we can start to do this so let's see the calculation very fast so the quantity as we can see or the volume is equal the area per v per t and to go through the calculation as i said i is a hydraulic gradient equal h over uh, l and so the q is equal l uh, or the quantity is equal a by k h over l because this is i by t so finally we can calculate the k which equal q l over a h t q is known because we already gathered it in uh, uh, gathered as a quantity of water it will be volume over uh, time uh, and l we already know l we already know the cross section of the our spacement h uh, is uh, the difference in the height and t is the time we gathered so the following head test uh, so this is for the uh, constant head test the following head test it's the same thing but here we can just let uh, the tab open to gather water because the clay is uh, void is very 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 small and we would lose a lot of water to just do the same thing that's why we just depend on uh, the decrease of the water from one point to one point in this tube and uh, uh, so we just if we have a, sta a stand uh, pipe and this is the clay soil and we just let the water uh, the sample here to be very saturated and to fill all the water until here so we just see the difference from the height between this point to, to, to this point so h1 is the pressure at the beginning after some times it will be h2 so this is the difference delta h depending on the difference in delta h through uh, domain uh, l and uh, the speed of the soil through this tube will equal uh, like the quantity of soil uh, the quantity of water which passed from this point to this point will equal the quantity of water which goes through the soil we will depend on this here to calculate our problem so here 
it's equal like uh, the flow of the water through the specimen at any time it will be equal kh uh, over l uh, product a and this will equal a which is the tube or the pipe uh, cross section by delta h over delta t the change in the uh, delta h by delta t is the speed or the change in the speed so depending on this we can calculate uh, k for uh, the clay soil and finally we can get this uh, this equation so it's pretty easy we can use these two equations either for sand soil or clay soil and we can get some constant so there are relation between hydraulic gradients and some other tests like for example the sieve analysis we can get from the sieve analysis the diameter uh, uh, of uh, uh, the diameter of soils uh, based from uh, uh, the sieve or the basing uh, or the diameter of the sieve that pass 10% of the soil and we just can multiply this by c which is a constant from 1 to 1.5 and we can get our coefficient of permeability there are a lot of correlation as we can see here this is another correlation we can use this correlation for calculating our coefficient of permeability there are relation for the cohesive soil for the clay soil and it depend on uh, the void the ratio so um, you can just use them for calculating this and depending on the voids ratio we can calculate uh, our uh, clay so this is montomonorolite or elite or uh, kilonite uh, this is the type of mineral inside the clay and uh, depending on the mineral inside the clay we can get the um, uh, the coefficient of permeability or depending on the porosity here we can get the coefficient of permeability so there are different ways to do this if the flow is not is not uh, perpendicular there are as we can see here uh, if the soil now if the flow is not perpendicular there is an angle here uh, so the uh, coefficient in x direction will be different from y direction that's why here this is the difference like some references for the difference between uh, k in horizontal direction and vertical direction so there are like some equation here to calculate the flow in barrel or stratified soil so if the flow is uh, parallel to the stratified soil we know that the quantity of the flow from here equals the quantity of the flow here so the q1 plus q2 plus q3 equal q so this is the equation uh, that will be depend uh, will depend on this equation here uh, as we can see q equal q1 they plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 depending on the number of uh, layers and finally we get uh, this equation uh, to calculate the equivalent uh, hydraulic conductivity for all the layer so here if the flow is uh, uh, perpendicular to uh, the soil so uh, here we can find to get the equivalent one we find that the head will be like the flow is equal here the equal here equal here equal here equal here but the head h here equal h1 plus h2 plus h3 plus h4 plus h uh, until we reach to hn so here we depend on as i said the velocity is equal the equal the q because the velo the q equal v by uh, product area so area is equal so we can say the velocity is equal that's fine but we can say that h equal h1 plus h2 plus h3 plus h4 eventually we can reach to the k equivalent in vertical direction so this is k in horizontal direction if it's parallel this is if it's vertical so there are this is a lab test we can get it from the field test like we can make a well and we can start to gather water in this well and to calculate the change in the water from one point to another point and the time we calculate the k so 
depending on uh, the wheel so if this is a, perma a permeable layer like sand layer and we are getting water from this uh, layer uh, we call this test permeability in uh, the field by bumping from uh, wheel so uh, this is called bumping from uh, wheel this unconfined permeable layer under uh, underlain by uh, impermeable stratum so this is layer is permeable and this is a uh, layer which is uh, like an uh, uh, impermeable layer so we start to take water from here and we collect uh, we can calculate the uh, k from this equation depending on the height here and the height uh, here and the distance from this as well to the middle of the larger one uh, or this we can call we call this wheel observation well so and this well to this well and you use this calculate this equation to calculate this there is like a proof a step by step but we don't need to look at it here here if the layer here this this layer is permeable and it's between two unpermeable layer now we can see that this uh, water here is under pressure so it goes up until here so finally uh, we can just calculate it from this equation so this is an overview about uh, the coefficient of uh, permeability. Now we will start to talk about uh, seepage. Now we will talk about uh, seepage. So seepage in general, as I said, uh, in uh, uh, seepage in general is the ability of the soil to pass the water from uh, from one point to another point, and it is control controlled by the coefficient of permeability. And the main uh, and the concept of the flow here is based on an equation called Laplace equation continuity. This equation is the, uh, the differential equation that control or govern the steady flow uh, condition here we will start to look at the equation in general to see what's going on in uh, seepage analysis so the Laplace equation here if we started to view uh, this uh, this uh, uh, picture or this figure here we can start to look at if we have a sheet pile here and this is the level of water here and this is the level of water in the other side and uh, so the soil the water will start to move from the higher side to the lower side because of the pressure and because of the soil head boys that uh, want to pass the uh, water so if we take an element here this element will have this is the velocity in this part which will be like if this is the dimension dx dz dy and if the velocity here is vx uh, so the quantity of the water here it's gonna be like the velocity by the area so the area of this the area in this side it's gonna be dz by dy so the quantity of the water to pass from here from this side left side to the right side is Q uh, so Q is equal uh, velocity by area and the area this is the velocity in X direction and uh, the area in X uh, the area here will be DZ or DZ by DY DZ by DY so throw this element there will be uh, so the velocity will be or the quantity of uh, the velocity will be vx plus partial vx partial v uh, partial x by dx there will be change in the velocity and this change in velocity is controlled by uh, this part of the equation so this is if the flow just passing through x direction if it's passing through z direction we find that vz is equal uh, like uh, the q is vz by dx dy and it is the same it's uh, here it's gonna like the difference in the velocity will be represented as we can see here so so as we can see uh, this is the equation of Laplace equation and if we went through Vx like which equals the coefficient of permeability in the horizontal direction and Vz is the coefficient of permeability in z direction we can see that 
uh, vx by uh, vx and vz we can calculate, calculate them through this equation so uh, fine uh, and after this we can uh, substitute uh, in this uh, in this equation here we can substitute this is the equation came from this uh, this one if we substitute so this will be the equation here and finally uh, this is uh, this is the equation so so uh, here to solve this equation this is a differential equation and uh, the, the difference in the height uh, ch uh, change with x and change with z uh, so the solution for the CBG here is solving this uh, differential equation or Laplace equation. So this is the mathematical solution and it's pretty hard to solve a differential equation. There are some software which can we use to model this and we solve it uh, mathematically uh, through softwares like Mathematica but we will have to write a script but there are another solution which is a graphical solution so what is the graphical solution the graphical solution is very simple like this is uh, define 1d i will take us to the 2d direct like if you want to solve our problem like here this is 1d so we can say like it's a good point to look at here so if we have the water from here and to go through here so the seepage will go through this line so let's take us to the uh, second part here is the flow net so if the dif there is difference in water between this side and this side here we will start that sh uh, we will start to divide this domain here into lines so the water will start to move like this then like this then like this then like this as we can see in this picture uh, or this graph we can see that our uh, our problem will be divided into flow line which represent the line of the water uh, flow through the soil and it's like this is uh, this is a flow line and between two flow lines we call it flow channel it's like a channel that pass water through it and we can see the, the second part of the flow uh, of this net uh, or this flow net is called equipotential uh, potential line and this dotted line we call it equipotential line and the pressure at the as this lines is the same so the pressure here is equal to here is equal here is equal here so what is the characteristic uh, of the flow line uh, of this flow net so the first line which is parallel or uh, stick to the sheet line uh, sheet pile here is considered the first flow line and the last line here fg so acd as the first flow line and fg here which is better to the impermeable layer is considered the last flow line and uh, the first uh, the first equipotential line here is the first line AB because we already know the pressure at this uh, line and it's equal which is equal H1 and the last equipotential line here uh, is uh, uh, potential line here is DE because we already the pressure here which is equal H2 so this is the main characteristics of the flow net you already know you need to know the first uh, equ uh, equipotential line the last equipotential line the first flow line the last flow line and you need to know like uh, we need to know that the difference is uh, all the uh, all the nodes on the same equipotential line have the same pressure and you need to know that uh, the uh, flow uh, the flow lines is uh, closer to each other uh, when it's close to the structure and when you go away from the structure you can see the difference between them is uh, larger and you need to know that between each two uh, equipotential line uh, divide the net into uh, uh, circular squares so we can draw a circle here inside uh, 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 each of these uh, elements so these are the main characteristics of our flow net so this is another problem for the dam 
we can see this is a flow line and this is the equipotential line as we can see here so the first thing we need to uh, to measure here is the number of channels flow channels so the number of a flow channel here uh, nf equal one two three four and n uh, and then we need to calculate the number of drops so the number of drops here it's something which define if the pressure here is h1 so the pressure here is h1 minus the pressure loss here in this one drop until it reach h2 because this is the case of the stability here so the soil when the soil start to move through the soil it loses some of its energy through the friction between the water and the soil so this loss in the energy we can uh, it will be define through this equal potential line so each potential line here uh, represent a drop in the pressure or in the energy until reaching here so the number of drops here it will be one two three four five six so we have four channels of water and we have six drops of energy to reach from this uh, energy here to this energy here so n flow equal k n drops equal uh, uh, six and here's the assumption that the, the soil here is homogeneous isotropic uh, homogeneous it's all the same soil isotropic then it means that k x in x direction equal in z direction the same here the number of flows here one two three four five and the number of drops here one two three four five six seven eight nine as you can see here it's nine so in order to calculate this like if we take just one segment here we can say that each one of these like the each channel of these represent a quantity of water so there will be here delta q delta q delta q delta q delta q and all of these delta q it represent the q scape from here to there but now it's the summation of this q equal one q as we can see here uh, that uh, that q1 will equal q2 will equal q3 will equal uh, q4 in the same a channel right because delta q is equal q1 q2 q3 because this is the same channel here uh, so we can see that delta q is equal k uh, which is the coefficient of permeability by h2 minus h1 so if the pressure here is h2 minus h uh, is a pressure here is h1 and here is h2 because let's come back here let's say if this h1 uh, capital h capital one so if this is h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 until we reach h capital two here which represent uh, so uh, the pressure uh, the pressure here it's going to be h1 minus the drop in energy here in this one how about here it's going to be h1 minus two drops here minus three drops so h2 minus h3 and so on until we reach to this uh, equation which is q for one channel equal k which is the coefficient of permeability by h which is the difference in pressure between the upstream and downstream with h1 minus h2 uh, and over n drop and to calculate it in all the soil we multiply by the number of the flow so we can get the whole flow here so this is the calculation here for h1 of these if the soil is anisotropic that means there will be difference in the q so the coefficient it is the same part here it doesn't change because it depends on the drawing of this uh, the, the flow net but uh, regarding the coefficient of permeability here it's square root kx k k c mm. 
so the mathematical solution it's pretty hard we are not going to talk about it so there will be uplift pressure under the hydraulic structure so if we are talking about the uplift pressure here so if this is one of the most important thing is to measure the uplift pressure because if there is a difference in pressure between the upstream and the downstream uh, there will be and the water is moving here there will be pressure at these nodes and we need to calculate this pressure to be able to calculate this pressure we calculate it through this uh, equation so this is uh, through this uh, equation so here this is the drop here in pressure at this one like one drop two drops three drops four drops five drops and six drops and we can calculate it uh, like as we can see here <laughs> So this is regarding our general earth dams here. We can see that the water will flow through piezometric line here through the the dam, and there are some equations here which control how you can measure this, and how you can draw these uh, lines, and you can control this. There are like technical ways you don't have to go through this manually. We can do this in like another course. To talk about how you can create this by hand but in general it's almost uh, not accurate to do this by hand because uh, we don't take into account different things and it's all about assumptions so it's, it's uh, we just need to understand the idea of the water so this is the first line there are equations to draw the first line here and this is modification from a dash to a or a prime to a and until to reach here uh, and it's different from type if there is a filter here this line will change to go and the water will escape through the filter if we saw here there is, would be another example uh, Cassegrand solution this is a mathematical solution yeah as we can see here if we have a filter so the first uh, sewage line will go through the filter here sometimes we do this in purpose just to force the flow to escape through uh, this filter and doesn't damage uh, the tow filter here uh, uh, so this is conclude the sewage here there are like ways to define uh, the, uh, the material for the dam and it follows a grain size uh, distribution and as long as the material in this domain so the material is fine uh, for the filter otherwise you have to change it so this conclude our problem for uh, conclude our understanding for the for the sewage problem if we are talking about uh, sheet piles here we will find that instead there will be a lateral air uh, lateral water pressure here uh, we can calculate it or we are interested in measuring this and we can calculate the quantity of the water escape from behind to the front throw q now we will uh, finish this uh, theory about uh, the coefficient of permeability and uh, the, the sewage analysis and we will go to software to start to model our problem. Now we are starting with our model. So first thing we will talk about sewage and consolidation analysis. Uh, we'll use a function for sewage boundary. We will go to geometry uh, and we we'll make um, solids. We will extrude and we will make auto connect. Then we'll start to mesh 3D. We'll go to console sewage consolidation to make nodal head and review for the console uh, for the sewage side. Then we will start. We'll go to consolidation analysis and set construction stages, uh, and uh, go to uh, and make some analysis steps. Then finally perform our analysis. So today we are going to model this problem here. So as we can see, this is like a traditional dam. It's and 
uh, the dam uh, has been built on a bed of uh, rock and above this be uh, bed of rock there is uh, uh, this is the dam uh, body uh, as we can see and in between there is the core which is from uh, clay material to be impermeable and this is uh, the filter here so the um, so uh, uh, which prevent any escape from uh, for the material uh, we will start to model this uh, problem here and here we will start to uh, add our um, materials either the core or filter or, uh, or dam body or bedrock so the material model we are going to use is more coulomb and the model's elasticity we will have to add the model's elasticity Poisson ratio and k node unit weight uh, as uh, the general part for the elasticity and for the porous part we will start to add the saturated unit weight and the initial void ratio and for the unsaturated uh, soil we will have start to add unsaturated for uh, mat material for the core and filter and uh, dam body uh, here for uh, kx uh, we talk about uh, kx uh, k we add like the permeability in diff uh, it's uh, in different direction uh, it's uh, in different uh, element and as we can see it's different in uh, different material for the core part this is the least uh, permeability and it increases until we reach to the damn body for the rock it's unpermeable for the non-linear parameter here we add non uh, the non-linear parameter friction angle which is uh, 35 uh, for the core and 30 uh, equation is 30 and here for the filter and damp body so we start to add our material uh, to save time we can take this file uh, so this will be our model I started to draw like to use this uh, drone uh, one to uh, make it easier for us uh, to work uh, immediately so here I will just go to extrude and I will extrude my model here all faces here um, uh, just in this direction 100 meter y direction I will extrude it 100 meter and I will say apply so this will be our uh, model and I will come here and I will just hide this and I will start to go to auto connect here and I say boolean and I choose everything and I say apply so I already shared all the faces here then I go to material now I will go to the material and I will start to add our material so first thing will be the core and our material model is more coulomb and we're gonna call it core for the modulus of elasticity here i will go back to my presentation for the core it's gonna be 4 e4 4 e4 and for the Poisson ratio it's gonna be 0.35 and for the gamma it's 20 and the k node it's gonna be 0 0.5 for the porous part here it takes it to uh, 21 and initial voice ratio 0 0.5 and unsaturated uh, property so the unsaturated property we will see what is this now I already predefined one for the core and filter and the body but let's see what is unsaturated property so if you went back to add and uh, modify unsaturated property it's you're gonna find it's a function between the pressure and uh, the permeability like when the pressure it's like a function when the pressure is zero like the flow is steady and nothing it change at all so the coefficient of permeability or the ratio will be one and when the pressure start to increase the coefficient of permeability will start to decrease as we can see here in this uh, graph here it's a relation between the coefficient of permeability ratio like the coefficient of permeability uh, when the pressure is uh, zero 
or the negative bore water there is no negative bore water pressure uh, so it's equal one we, with the values we entered and when there is a negative bore water pressure pressure we start to define a different curve for it so the the permeability is uh, lower coefficient of permeability is lower so you can define define uh, uh, define it from the literature you can look at the literature and you can define a curve for each material the same here for the water content function like uh, the same uh, the same thing is between the uh, pressure uh, pressure and the water content so when the pressure is zero this is the water content and the particles uh, we have and when the neg there is negative bore water pressure this water content start to decrease uh, with uh, with the pressure so you can uh, define them and you can draw your uh, your curve as we can see here so this met is uh, like uh, this can come from uh, at zero we can get this from um, we can get those two from literature or from test uh, uh, and as we can see when there is no pressure uh, the reach the values is the same but when there are uh, pressure uh, when there is the pressure start to increase the coefficient of uh, permeability decreases and the water content start to decrease as well uh, in order like to look here we can find that there is one for the filter and one for uh, uh, one for uh, uh, for the water pressure here and one for the dam body uh, so this is the unsaturated uh, property when uh, because we know that uh, if we looked back here if we saw that this dam is filled with water until here and the water start to move inside the dam here so the particles above this part of uh, soil uh, of this water it will be unsaturated and it w it could have a negative bore water pressure so we start to define uh, the the coefficient of permeability and the water content for this uh, for uh, for this because there could be like a negative uh, water pressure comes here from this down uh, part so we consider it so we consider a coefficient of permeability for this unsaturated part of the soil either here in dam or in filter or in core uh, so this is what defines uh, what it means by unsaturated material uh, and we get them from literature as I said and there are equation like if we added one here we can add one individual uh, so we can add choose the name of uh, whatever we can call it like let's say core and we start to define the permeability function we could user define like we can add our curve here or you can add it from uh, equation let's say uh, this function so if we went in literature to this function we will find that there uh, this function depend on two parameters a and n so depending on these two parameters we can calculate this uh, uh, we can draw uh, this equation uh, this curve and uh, back here for the water content he start to ask you what is the first value theta r and uh, theta s uh, and a and n and we get this from the literature and you start to draw your curve you can like you can start to change a to 0.2 or this is to 3 and you can start to draw we can see this is affect our curve you can use different uh, methods here like uh, front row function so you you add your um, your uh, k ratio we can say 0.5 and h node which is uh, let's say 4 and we start to draw our graph here and let's make it 5 like h node the initial pressure as we can see here it just reduce it to 5 like as we can see here it reached to 0 0.5 and it reduces if we make it 0 0.1 we're gonna see this goes down here as we can see here and let's make it um, each node up to 10 
like we can see here that each node this is the height of the negative uh, pore water pressure like if we went back here and if we see each node is the height of the negative pore water pressure above the water uh, level so we this is another way to draw our function here and we make it like let's say 0.3 and we start to draw uh, we make it one meter and we start to draw it whatever uh, in our case and you can use it from uh, van or user defined so it's easy like we are now familiar with this I got it from the literature and this is uh, the values what that we can use here we can share this file and I will start to add our core parameters so the unsaturated material it comes from the core and it's drained and the coefficient of permeability here in this case it's 1.9 E5 and since it's isotropic material it's equal in all direction and a specific stability he take it as uh, O2 so it's fine we go to nonlinear material it's 30 and 35 uh, 0.6 we take the dilancy angle to be 5 it's fine and we can say apply then we start to add the filter here and the filter here is 5e4 and the uh, Boisson ratio 0 0.33 and unit width is 20 and 0 0.4 here for the porous 22 and 0 0.5 and for the unsaturated part we take it filter and for the this one one e one e minus four we have to modify this one uh, one e minus four and we take it in all cases and the units here is okay and we say apply last one like uh, here's a body or damn body damn body here uh, 5.2 and 0.319 and k node is 0.74 and for the porous part it's uh, 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 0.22 0.5 and this is 0.01 and we say apply and finally this is the bedrock and we haven't modified the non-linearity we will go to modify it later more column 2 e 6 0.223 K node is 0.6 and the porous is 23 again and 0.5 and K node is 1 e minus 5 
we copy this here and we say nonlinearity is 100 and this is 4, 3 and this will be 13 and we are good for the bedrock and we say apply we go back to damn body and we say uh, this is damn body and for nonlinearity is 0 and we take it 0 0.2 as we agreed to we can take this 0 and this is 3 9 and we will take this as 9 can we say ok and for the filter we go back to nonlinearity and we take it as 0 0.2 and this is search 3 and this will be 3 and we say ok and for this part we take it 0 0.5 so now we are done with our material we go to property we start to choose 3d property and for the core we choose it core and for the filter we choose it filter and for the damn body we choose it damn body and finally for the bedrock and we choose it bed rock and we close and close and we come here to uh, mesh and we choose 3d mesh and we choose our filter here and we start to edit to be two meters and we choose the core and we call it core and we say apply then we go to the filter and we call it filter and we choose the filter material and we call it four and we say apply we can see here he just uh, attach all the bodies to each other and for the body we make it three meters and we make it body and we call it damn body and we say apply and finally for the bedrock here we choose it and we choose the size to be 10 meters and we choose bedrock and we call it bedrock and we say apply so this is for the part here of the dam now i will start to add the sewage parameter i will go here to static slope sorry sewage and i will start to add nodal head so what is nodal head here like if we take this like this so nodal head it is uh, like if we remember from Bernoulli equation uh, it is that uh, which is uh, with, uh, like uh, from uh, Bernoulli equation if we get back uh, here to permeability so it's uh, pressure head plus the elevation head so the part of the nodal head here he start to take the elevation head here from zero and zero and zero as we measure it from here and we start to add a pressure head from this uh, from this uh, line so i start to choose from pressure head so i take it 20 meters so we we'll start to add 20 meters pressure from uh, zero and zero and zero and if that uh, from zero and zero and zero and i will tell him okay from face so i will have to go here to check uh, everything and i will come here and choose these faces this one and this one and this one and i will tell him okay i won't you to put me uh, to put uh, a pressure head on and uh, on these faces uh, with 20 meter but uh, if we checked here like if we came here and we started to measure from let's say from this point to this point it's around 25 meters so that's not correct because we already add to uh, 20 meters here so he will add here as uh, 20 meters so i'm telling him if the total head uh, is less than the potential head then take you equal zero so i have to check this because he will add here 
uh, he will add here uh, total head here it's 25 uh, it's uh, as I as I said here the elevation head plus 20 so uh, as uh, as a pressure head so he will add it as so he will add it as 25 like it will be like more than 25 so i'm telling him if the total head is less than the potential uh, the potential head take it q equals zero so the other five meters here he will consider them as zero that's why i choose this one and i'm calling this steady state so in the steady state when the dam is filled with 20 meters of water behind it uh, I will consider this as 20 meter so I will take this again face and this is gonna be 20 meter I choose these faces again and what's above 20 meter he will ignore it and take it as uh, zero and I call this a steady state and I start to add it and I say apply so as I said now any point above the 25 20 meter he will ignore uh, the queue from them then I will go back again and I will start to add uh, another one for the transient state and now I will start to choose faces again and I will choose these faces and I will tell him now uh, I will get it from function, but I will tell this with we one meter. It's just a value to enter to the to enter to it. I already defined it before, but let's see what I did. So if this is a function, it's empty. So I will start to say at time equal zero. It will be 20, 20 meter of height. But after 72 hours, after 3 days, it's going to be 5 meters. And after 100 hours, it's going to be 5 meters. Like this. So this is our function. And I will say apply. And I will say transient flow. And I say okay so I will choose a transient flow and I will say apply if we came back here we'll find two boundary condition one here and this is another one then we go to review our seepage I want to review my seepage here on face and I say review and say apply so he will review our sewage at this area now I'm done with my model I go now to stage but this time I'm going to choose sewage and I will say add and I will enter here I will put all meshes I will get back here yeah I see I will get back here to construction stages edit first case steady state and I will add all my mesh and I will add review case and steady state and say save then new and I will say transient stage and I will change this to transient and I will take the steady state boundary condition out and I will put the transient and change the time step here 
to be having in 72 uh, hour and I will generate this in three steps and I will save all the results and I will say okay then the last case yes the last case is maintain water level and this is the time of the water stay stable at uh, the lower five meter brush uh, total pressure and I say uh, put this time in 144 hours and do this in three steps save everything and I say okay save close and now I go here to analysis construction stages and run and it comes from here and I say okay then seabage and we say okay okay and we start to run our model solve We will boost our answer until we get to the answer. Now we can start with viewing our results. For when we consider the nodal case, we can start to look at the total uh, head. As we can see here, this is the total head. So as we can see uh, from the last case, and this is the pore water pressure, we can see the values here. I can go now to the total head here in the uh, the total head here in the steady case, and if I choose the prop we can see this is the total head here as we can see here it's 20 almost 20 and this is the value that we added here this is the part this is the pressure as we can see here and if we start to get inside we can find this is start to change as we can see here And we can look at the total head pressure from the transient case or from the drawdown. So we can see that these values start to decrease to minus uh, 215 and 10. Those are the three cases. Then we can see like this is the uh, throw the rabbit draw down when we mint in the water. So we can see the draw down change. Let's see something interesting which is the water flow. So if I got here and I went here to results and I saw seabage and I want to see the flow here. So if I went to maintain case and the first case and I want to so see the, f the water flow here 
from the first case from the steady case we can see that this is the water flow here and we even can see the movement of the water so we can see in the steady case this is the movement of the water the water start to move from the upstream to the downstream and it's hard to go through the core so it goes down from down here beneath it so if we saw the water draw down here when we started to when the water level start to decrease so the water inside the filter and the core is, st is still high and the water started to go back here from the other case we can see it still go more here it goes more and from the last case we can see that the water start to go back more so this is a very good presentation for the flow and we can see here that we can add as many baths as we want we can start to view here the bore pressure head we can view the flow rate so we can see here that the flow rate here is there is no flow and here we can see that increase we can look here at the 3d element results so we can start to see the con conductivity and uh, hydraulic gradient we know now what is the hydraulic gradient in x direction and this is in y direction because of course it's hard in this direction and in z direction so we can see the, uh, that the water movement uh, in three direction and we can see the we can see also the flow velocity in x direction so it's very fast here like the water goes out from here very fast and we can see like in lateral direction but in z direction we can see this is the, f the water flow and it's hard through the core so the water speed is very high through the body but it's slow and almost negligible uh, through the core we can also view the results of the permeability and uh, the velocity and the volumetric of the water content here we can see these values this is the value we entered if you still remember in the steady case and when we start here do you remember when I said there will be a generation for the water pressure so this uh, negative war water pressure so it will be in the upper value when the water uh, start to go to rapid drawdown so there will be a negative bore water pressure here and the water content will start to decrease uh, because the water will start to fall back due to the rapid drawdown that's why it's very important to define this function we also can come here and go to multi iso surface and we can go to the nodal seepage stress and we can see the total head and we can look here at the surfaces with the same head so as we can see here this is the surface at the beginning here when it's 20 so this is the surface with 20 and this is the surface when it started to be less than 20 as we can see here and we can see the pool water pressure head and we start to present this is the pool water pressure surface equal pool water pressure surface 
we also can show here the total head and we can start to show the development of the total head here we can show the flow rate we can show here poor water pressure head as we can see here Now we will start to do our first cobbled analysis or second cobbled analysis between the seepage and the stresses. So we will go back to construction stages and we'll do this. Now we can just go here and start to add the boundary condition to the weight. We call it ground boundary condition uh, or gravity sorry and we say apply we choose um, constraints make it O2 and we say ground and we say apply now we can start to go to stages here we can copy we can come here and we add another one too but this time it will be seepage and stress so we can start to add here and we can start to for the first case and we can say uh, steady state and it will be steady state we add all the mesh and review and the steady state and we say save then new we call it stress and we add the ground and uh, we add the load it's gonna be stress here ground and we will add gravity and we say save then transient and we say take off steady and we add transient state and we say here transient and the time step will be 72 hours and we're gonna add them in three and we save uh, and we say okay and we say save and we say new and we say stress and we say save then new and we say men pain water table and it will be transient time step 440 and we'll put it into steps and generate and say ok and save then finally we add stress and we say save so this is considered the couple analysis first start with the steady state then we will add the stress and we add the ground and the gravity then transient one we add the transient state we take off the steady state then stress one then uh, transient one then stress one close close we go here and add we call it whatever cobbled and it's construction stages and we say from second one and apply close and we start to run our problem and we say okay
now we can look at uh, run number two now we can find here stresses we can find the displacement at the beginning it's zero then we can see the next one we can see the development of stress uh, of settlement here here and here it start the settlement started to differentiate and increase with time we can look here at the solid stresses in z direction and we can see that with the different different uh, water steps so now we can see that we have different ways to do our coupled analysis we can even do something related to construction if we came here did it and we can come here and we start to uh, make in the stress one we can check slope stability and we say save and we even can check slope stability in h1 and every time the water change we can start to see to see the the factor of shift now you just can after this you already solved your problem now we are going back to a model we already did it before uh, in lecture 5 uh, yes I think lecture 5 or lecture 6 let's see lecture 5 lecture 5 and we'll start to see how we can check seepage if we have deep excavation like this like we'll go here and we'll start to look at our problem and we'll go to go here and we'll go to seepage and we'll start to add nodal head we will start to add nodal head here at this point and here and here and here so this will be our head and we make it zero if we want the water level to be here so we will leave it at zero and we check no problem and we call this steady state so the water level will be here at zero and it will start to decrease uh, and we can check it on our uh, on our problem if in our excavation if to see uh, the dewatering and we say apply close so we back here to the meshing and we close everyone we open the embedment depths and the layer of excavation and we just come here like this and we start to review our seepage at this level and we say stage one and we review at this level and we say stage two and we review at this level and say stage three and finally stage four so now we are reviewing our seepage uh, at this level and now we will go back here and we start to add another case of stress seepage sloop and we say add here we can start to say stage one we will add excavation and we say activate so we add all the layer of excavation and the layer of soil and weathering soil and we add the ground uh, we will add the ground 
uh, boundary and the uh, gravity boundary and we can say save so this will be the initial condition and we can just move this to previous and we call this transient state or sorry we can delete this stage and we check this to be steady and even the boundary condition here will leave it out and we can no we just can keep it stresses and the boundary condition will be okay like this and we say save next one I will start to add the sheet pile so this is and our bios bios and sheet pile and interface and we remove the rigid link this is we forgot to do this in the last step we add the rigid link here and save and here we remove the rigid link and we added the interface sheet boundary condition and we say uh, sheet pile interface now we say okay next one we will add we will start to add to excavate first excavation and we'll start to uh, add our first anchor wheeling strut and uh, save but here we forgot to add the boundary condition for rotation of the pile and we say save and here we say new and this is seabed seep one now we are going to do steady and we will add stage one of review and we will add steady state and we say save and now we say new at this stage we excavate one more and we add second and second and save then it's a stress and we say save then new and we review now we take this boundary condition for reviewing and we review at second one and we say save and we make it steady and we say save new stress again and we say excavation three three whaling three anchor loads will be three and we say save new and now steady state we take off two and we put three and save new and we add stress and we excavate four and we add whaling four and anchor four and we add last one here is a stage four of anchorage and we say save and we say new and we will add here stage four stage four we'll take stage three off and we'll put stage four and we say save then new and we call it stress and we can check over all the stability here and we say save and close and close now we finally go here and add another one run two we call it construction stages and we take it from here and now we add everything and we say okay and apply and close but here we can add your water pressure and you can do whatever analysis you want we already now did a coupled analysis between stress seepage and slope stability you can run this analysis you can view the results and 
uh, until now next lecture we are going to talk about consolidation it's a very important lecture and uh, you have to apply uh, these notes by your uh, hand and try it and uh, to in uh, to absorb of this information see you in next lecture uh, good luck with your study thank you